I've noticed that as I've come home and shared my experiences with friends and family that it's still such a very personal experience to me. It has changed the way I look at the company. It has changed the way that I look at every bottle of oil. It's actually changed the way that I look at my life. If people don't watch any more of this video, I will tell you right off the bat that doTERRA is bigger than a bottle of oil. It's mm -hmm. bigger than um, our little group in Washington. It's bigger than the people who, wellness advocates, it's bigger than the founding executives. doTERRA is a movement. doTERRA is a a worldwide cause. I thought it was amazing and huge and fantastic and exceptional in every single way before I went on this trip. But now I feel like I am a part of something even more, more meaningful. We teach classes and, and we share with people the way that each individual oil can bless their lives and, and improve their health. And, and that is a really, really important message. But now it's just as much about how we get these oils. It's just as much about the people whose lives on the front end of the process are being affected and the work, the work that they put in and the love and the passion that they put into doing their part inspired me to do the same on my end, if that makes sense. In case anyone doesn't know who I am, I'm Elaine Harvey. I live in the Seattle area and um, I'm a gold leader with doTERRA and I put a picture of me and my husband on the introduction because this trip, this business, this opportunity that I have had would not have been possible without him and without his support. So I wanted to make sure that he got credit right off the bat. We have obviously our co-impact sourcing models model. What it does is it allows us to connect with farmers in places where the plants grow natively and it allows us to go in and teach them best practices to train them about how to better improve the yield from their plants, to teach them more about how to get the best price in the market for their product. Um, lots and lots of work that goes into developing relationships and cooperatives and establishing basically like the doTERRA culture, establishing that within these smaller communities, um, a culture of integrity, a culture of everyone wins when we all help each other, a culture, a culture of hard work, um, you know, the hand up rather than the hand out. So co-impact sourcing, obviously from doTERRA's perspective, is all about helping the people who source our oils um, live better lives. And we work with non-governmental organizations. In my case, this trip to Guatemala was with Choice Humanitarian. And Choice Humanitarian basically is they are on the ground in these communities on a regular basis. And they often have different projects that they're working on to help better the lives of the people within those areas. And so from Choice Humanitarian, we had two trip leaders who are from the States who came with us, who have visited this area of Guatemala before and have relationships with our, I'm just, I would call them like in-house partners. So the people who are there in Guatemala all the time, running the, helping run the facility, helping do the buying, working with the farmers. These are the people with the boots on the ground in these locations and I will introduce them to you in the PowerPoint later. And they are, they're basically employed, I guess, through Choice Humanitarian. So doTERRA partners with organizations like Choice Humanitarian because Choice has relationships already within these communities. So it's, it's a really, really powerful connection. And we need those types of organizations because we can't, basically we can't do it all right? So we need to create these power partnerships with them. 
Obviously, the doTERRA Healing Hands Foundation is what helps fund a lot of the projects that happen within these communities. So trip details, this is the group. This is all of us. I believe there are around 40 of us. And these people have now become family to me. Um, each one of them added so much uniquely to the experience and stepped out of their comfort zones and opened their hearts to new relationships and to new experiences. And we all just grew to love each other towards the end of the week. Obviously we were all really emotional saying goodbye and just the bonds that you create when you work shoulder to shoulder with people, when you sacrifice with people, when you do hard things with people, um, those relationships are, are long lasting. So this picture makes me really happy. This was on the last night, our farewell dinner. We had just, they had just kind of like opened up the mic and people got to share their experiences about the week and their thoughts and feelings. And so we were all emotional right before this photo, but um, the trip length was a week and um, a lot of that was travel, to be honest, two full days, two and a half full days of, of travel. So it was 10 to 12 hours by bus. Um, we had one of those motor coach type buses for the first 10 hours. And then the last two hours, we were in the equivalent of a 15 person van on wow. dirt roads. Uh, so it was deep, deep, deep in the jungle where we were. The cost of the trip was $2,000. So he needed silver and above leaders to have the opportunity to put in to the lottery. And if you win the lottery, you have basically like a week to say whether or not you're in or not, or whether or not you're in. We had to pay for our airfare. But once we were there, we didn't have to pay for any food or any lodging or any travel or anything like that. And attending was um, Silver and Above leaders and their guests. So you have the opportunity to bring a guest. And so there were some cross line partners. There were some husband and wife teams. I think, I don't know, maybe half were husband and wife teams. And just people from all over the country, uh, all over the United States went. One of the main things that they talked to us about from the very beginning was that it's time to get out of your comfort zone and that it isn't until we're out of our comfort zone that we grow. And so they were encouraging us from the very first night at the welcome dinner to sit next to someone we didn't know and talking to us about how there will be lots and lots of different emotional and physical challenges on this trip and to be prepared for them and how to navigate them. They said mainly you're going to need a sense of humor and they said also make sure that you are, you know, checking in with yourself emotionally and physically. And if you need a break to take a break, we had a support team there. Obviously the choice people were there but we also had a, a security guard who was with us, who was he's a, a sergeant at the Salt Lake City Police Department and a member of the SWAT team. And he was there. And then we had our own EMT. So we had someone looking out for us health-wise as well. And then we had two uh, Guatemalan policemen who joined us on the entire trip and at first, we were like, well, why do we need to have police with us? But um, not once did I feel like my safety was compromised or that I needed to be fearful. I wasn't, I was not uncomfortable as far as my safety goes at any given time the entire trip. The, what we were told was that it's a gesture from the Guatemalan government to the local people who we are going to visit to show government support for what we were doing. And it was a gesture to show us that they supported what we were doing. But they said that it's most common also for them to just kind of sit back and, you know, kind of cross their arms and hang out in the, in the background and just supervise things. 
But these guys, these two guys got in and did every single part of the process with us. They got their hands dirty. They got their whole bodies dirty. They did the hikes with us. They did the, the projects that I'll talk about later. They were all in the entire week. And we bonded with them so much so that you know they were crying before they left the bus to say goodbye. <laughs> um, it goes to show you that when we're all willing to just kind of open ourselves up to this wonderful possibility and this wonderful experience and, and step out and, you know, try to work beyond language barriers, um, some beautiful things can happen.